Hi guys and welcome back to another video. My name's Destiny and I do book things here and today I thought we would talk about my top five of 2022. My top five of my physical reads. So my physical TBR reads. Um, and my goals for 2022. So um, I was going to do my top 10 of all of all of my reads, which I read 102 books, but I can't find my list anywhere. Um, so instead I looked through the list and figured out the top five of I physically read last year, and I'm gonna give you those instead, because I have them on my shelves. It was an easy decision and I don't have to pay battle the books again like I did before. Um, and then we'll go through my goals for the year. Um, yeah, so my favorite out of, I guess, I have a favorite of the whole year, and then the rest of them could go in any order. Um, my favorite of the whole year was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Um, this is a dark academia, yell, has yell with secret societies, a girl who was down on her luck. Um, it does have trigger warnings for suicide. Um, rape, murder and mayhem. Yeah, that kind of includes, includes all of it. Um, I highly, highly love this so much. I highly recommend. If you're wanting clearer um, trigger warnings, definitely check Storygraph. My Storygraph is linked below because that's going to have Storygraph's really, really good for trigger warnings of where I go for all of mine. Um, I loved Alex in this. I love the mystery. I also love how much research went into this and how many subjects that I never knew before were brought up in here. Um, yeah, I absolutely love this book. Alex, Alex is something else. I love Darlington, even though he didn't get much page time. Um, if Alex and Do, Do, Do's, Do, Do's, 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 however you say her name, don't end up together, I'm gonna be a little upset. I just wanna say that right now. Um, they both deserve love and they should find love together. Like, they're definitely, I, I ship them hard. Um, so I absolutely love this. My next one, I'm going to pop in by my head because my cover, my copy doesn't have a cover on it. So I would just be holding up a blank book. And that is House of the Act of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. Um, I am Mass Trash. You didn't know that? Hi, welcome. I'm Mass Trash. I love Sarah J. Mass. Usually you fall on one hand or the other. Either you absolutely love her writing and love her characters or you don't like her. I love her. Um, I love all her characters and I would live in any of her books. I would happily risk my life living in any of her books. Um, and this is the second one in the Crescent City series. Um, the first was A House of Earth and Blood. Blood and Earth? Earth? No, I'm right. Earth and Blood. Now it's hot, sky, House of Sky and Breath. Um, the ending. The ending is all I'm going to say. If you know, you know. If you've read this book, you'll know. Um, it leaves me so many questions because I also finished Kingdom of Ash this year. Um, and it leaves me with so many questions of what happens next. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go ahead and pop that one in because honestly, my, my copy is right up there, but I don't have it with a cover on it so it doesn't make sense for me to even try to show y'all because as you see in my book. The next one is Gideon the Ninth by Tazin, Tazin Nier. I could be saying that but during that I apologize profusely if I am. Um, I absolutely love this book but I'm so mad about what happens at the end. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, this is the best way to describe this is space opera meets murder mystery. Um, so think Agatha Christie in space. Um, so you meet Gideon the Ninth. She is like the protector um, for the ne necromant ne 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 necromancer. There is necromancer of the Ninth Planet. Um, and so she goes to be the sword. I was trying to re, 
acclimate myself to the terminology in here. So she becomes a swordsman for the, the ninth necromancer and people start dying on this planet and they're trying to figure out how they become like the next step up of a necromancer and um, who's murdering all these people and what's going on. And they're locked in the palace. Like they can't leave the planet they're on. So it's a locked door mystery who done it. It's so good. Um, somebody, anybody, could have warned me of the ending. Because I fell in love with a certain character and now that character's gone. And I don't know if I want to pick up the next one because the character I fell in love with is no longer there. So if you've read this and you've read Hero of the Night, leave me a comment below. Is it worth it? Because the lesbian necromancers brought me in and I fell in love with a character and it made me stay. And now that character no longer is there. And I'm like, do I want to stay now? There's that. Next on my list is... Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. Um, this is actually the third in this series. Um, if you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know that I don't usually physically read these. I almost 100% listen to them because it always sings the creepy little songs to me and I absolutely love that about these, this series. Um, unfortunately, my library, Nora Scribd, has the fourth one on audio so I'm going to physically read it and I'm really really worried because I've loved all of these because I listened to them. Um, if you've never heard of this series this is, it takes place in the 1920s. Um, you're following Evie O'Neill and Evie is a has the power that if she holds something of yours she can tell you your deepest darkest secrets by reading that object. Um, she reads the object to the wrong person one night at a party while she's drunk on illegal booze and gets put out of her of Zenith, Ohio, where she's living, and ends up having to go live with her uncle in New York. He manages the, the Museum of Creepy Crawlies. It has a proper name. Everyone refers to it as the Museum of Creepy Crawl the, uh, the Museum of the Creepy Crawlies, and it that stuck in my head. Um, and while there, she in, it ends up that her uncle's asked for his help and solving serial killings because there's a cult, there's cult, a cult, uh, symbols and stuff on the bodies. And Evie gets dragged into trying to hunt down and eliminate a serial, ki serial killing ghost. Um, and this ghost sings creepy little songs. And so each book has its own kind of like ghost thing going on. And it's Evie and all these characters you fell in love with the first one, trying to solve them. This one follows more of Memphis's story and you get a lot of the answers that I've been dying to get in the first two and that's why it's on my list this year because this one made me fall in love with all the rest of the characters. I can't stand Evie and that's basically my problem sometimes because when I'm in her head I find her super annoying but the concept excuse my cats um the concept of the story itself and like all of that keeps me hooked in. Then lastly for the top five this year is one that I did not see myself loving. Um, I, my, my better half had it on her, um, nightstand or on her, um, uh, not coffee table, end table. And I asked her about it and she's like, oh, I love it. Let me know when you read it. Well, like I said, I just picked it up from Goodwill. And I thought to myself, mm, I'm going to go ahead and read it. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and read it and see what I think. And I fell in love. And that is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Um, it's actually another historical fiction. It follows, I'm trying to remember her name, Dana, Dana, Dana. Dana is a woman who on her 26th birthday, all of a sudden she gets jerked back to Annabelle South where there's a young white boy drowning. So she instincts kicked in, goes and gets him, saves him. And for her trouble, her, his mama starts beating him in the back, her back and like she thinks she's about to die and then comes back to the 70s. Don't quote me on that. I want to say it's like, am I wrong or right? 1976, yeah. So she ends up back in 1976. Um, 
and she kind of goes back and forth for a while there. Um, the first of the book starts off, you find out that she lost her arm somehow in this. Um, and so it, I don't usually do historical fiction. It's something that I just doesn't usually jive with me. This year, more than any other, I have read books that were set in some time other than our own or not in the future. Um, usually I read mostly novels that it could be really any time. Um, and so it was super strange that I have fallen in love with four historical fictions this year. Um, where the book takes place in the past, not our time. So yeah, I absolutely love this. I love watching her struggle. I love seeing how shockingly different things were. Even like Dana talks about it versus like the 1800s versus 1976. But as you're reading it as a person in 2023 or 2022 when I read this, it's even more shocking of how different things are. Um, and Dana, when she goes back to the South, she has an attitude and has like a, basically where she, and they put it as she thinks she's better than them, but are as good as them. And really she's just being a human and a normal human. Um, so yeah, it was really, really good. Those are my top five. So, next, we're going to talk about my goals. My overall goal for the year is to read 100 books. Um, I finished 102, like I said, so I really want to read 100 this year. It shouldn't be a problem. I've already finished 12. We're on the 18th of January, and I have finished 12. So, I don't think reading 100 is going to be a problem. My second one is to read one poetry book this year so leave me your suggestions below of one I should pick up um it's something that someone I love dearly holds dear and true to their heart and they they happen to love poetry and it's something I've never really had a much experience with other than school so I really want to give it a try my second my, my third goal is to read one classic again outside of school I never really read any of these and I really want to my fourth goal is to read brains going through oh my fourth goal is to finish a finish a series um i have a bunch i'm in the middle of and so if i read the king of crows i will finish that series if i um read i only have one more miss pentagram's book which is the desolation of devil's acre if i read that one i would finish a series so i really want to finish series i've already started Lastly, I want to physically read for 45 minutes every day. Um, I have not been physically reading really at all. Um, I have caught myself watching more TV than anything. And so I really, really want to get back into reading more than I do watch TV or anything. So I want to read for 45 minutes daily, like physically read. Um, I usually listen to an audiobook while I'm at work all day long, so it's not hard to finish a book, especially when I'm listening to them sometimes at two to three times speed. It's not hard to finish a book in four hours. Um, but yeah, those are my goals for this year. Uh, what are what's one goal you have this year? I would love to hear it and love to chat about it in the descript or in the <laughs> in the comments. Um, if you want more bookish content from me or more content from me period because I pretty much post whatever there are links down in the subscription I have a blog that I keep up with I post once weekly on there and then I post on Instagram three I'm hoping to do three times a week don't quote me on that I'm hoping to do three times a week um but we shall see right now I'm at two times a week so it you usually get a video on Monday and Friday and then you get a post on Instagram on Wednesday and Saturday, or Wednesday and Sunday, and Saturday I post a blog. So you get something every day except Tuesdays. Um, and that's just because Tuesdays are the busiest day at work for me. So yeah, but if you have any questions or any comments or anything, I would love to hear them. And I'd love to answer any questions you have. And I'll see you on my next one. Don't forget to subscribe when you get out of here. Or 
<laughs> don't forget to subscribe when you leave here and i hope you're having a wonderful day or night wherever you're at bye guys